Where am I? What am I missing? Uh, it was another Big Twelve esque weekend, other than the you know the blowout in Dallas. I mean, everything was close. Everything was. You know, teams are, are right there. You know, Tech had Oklahoma State on the ropes, and Oklahoma State, um, you know, figured out that they were the better and more experienced team and then pulled away and won that game at home. Uh, the Oklahoma thing goes to show you, you know, there are um, myths that we all about our favorite teams choose to believe. And I think what Oklahoma fans optimistically were telling themselves that it doesn't matter that it's a whole new coaching staff. It doesn't matter that we have more turnover this program and 40 new players and all these different things. Brent Venables will be good. Everything will work out well. You know, sometimes there's transition and it takes time. And this is a program that doesn't know itself very well right now. It doesn't know really what it's doing on both sides of the ball completely and has some injuries. And we're seeing that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the, the game you have to start with. Uh, not that it was the best game, because it wasn't. Uh, might not have been the most viewed. It might have been, though. Uh, it might not have been this or that, but it, it was probably the most interesting just because of what it could mean moving forward. Um, that's a season changer for Texas, and that's a season changer for Oklahoma. Uh, for Texas, uh, you knew that you were – a little less than 100% without your starting quarterback, but that you were managing and navigating along pretty well other than that Texas Tech game where you just kind of let that go uh, at the end and you just didn't finish. Uh, but you should have won that game. And now, you know, I wonder how much of a – how much of a you know thorn that will be in their side, depending on what they do the rest of the way. But that's what's interesting is now everybody's talking about, oh gosh, like how good is Texas really? And man, look at that schedule. Like who is going to jump up and beat them? And you know, on the one hand, I agree that you know there's reasons to to wonder, like man, how good could they really be? At the same time, I do think we have to realize like Oklahoma's now had performances like this other than the shutout aspect of it for three straight weeks. Like they've been getting demolished by everybody they played. Uh, so I think we all saw that coming. Like, I think we all saw the blood in the water and we all knew that yours was probably going to be back. And it just, it set up to be the perfect manuscript for Longhorn football fans. You know, as far as a Saturday in Dallas goes against your arch rival, that was, it's not possible for that to be, have been written any better than, than it was for UT fans. So that was a long time coming for them. They haven't had a lot to cheer about as far as that game in particular goes. And then what's following that uh, for a long time now you know when they have been Oklahoma recently outside of you know that uh, Sugar Bowl run uh, it's been kind of like the highlight of their season but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case this year because they could have a lot more highlights if they play as well as they did on Saturday but you know I do wonder how much of that is also the competition and that's when you look at Oklahoma so like for UT like man like I, I expect the excitement level is probably the highest it's been in, in several years uh, for Oklahoma uh, there's no doubt the disappointment level is is the lowest it's been or the highest it's been in well over two decades. And right before Stoops was hired, yeah. when Snellenberger and John Blake. And, yeah. and the problem for them is that whereas Texas can wonder what if in terms of, well, what if we had Quinn Ewers? And I, I think that that question needs to go away. We've seen it far too much already. Like, I get the the conversation, but, like, let's, let's win more games and then we can have that conversation. Um, but while they've kind of got, like, that's, like, their biggest question to have to answer, really. And now they have all this excitement looking forward to the rest of the schedule and what could be for Oklahoma fans – you know, looking at the rest of that schedule and worrying about what could be and worrying about just how bad it could get because there are more losses out there. And it's just a matter of how bad and one-sided could those losses be. Are there more UT-type losses out there? Are there more K-State-type losses out there? there? There might be. And so I'm just very curious on their end to see how bad it gets or whether or not they're able to, to correct course because, man, that was, that was all-time bad on Saturday for, for one team and all-time good for the other. And they're seemingly going in different directions. Uh, but, man, it's really fascinating to see with two months still left to go where that might lead them both.